Hey, I'll be back on Friday. You know, we all grew up with this uh, false notion that a magnet has two poles, which it actually doesn't. Well, sure it does. It has a North Pole and a South Pole. Well, actually it doesn't. You actually have to fundamentally understand what an elementary force vector is, which is a three-dimensional S-curve. And that three-dimensional S-curve actually extrapolates out the interior geometry of a torus. Let's get back to opposites attract. Well, you know, if you bring a North Pole and a South Pole close, they will accelerate towards one another. That's magnetic attraction. Well, magnetism by definition is centrifugal force in motion. And it is not increasing inertia. It is not centripetal convergence. It is not uh, inertia and acceleration. The only true uh, magnetic phenomena would be uh, bringing two like poles together, two souths or two norths. But let's actually talk about and get to the fundamental premise. And of course, I hope you understand, I've talked about this endlessly before in countless other videos, what a three-dimensional S-curve is and actually understanding what a force vector is. I try to make things as simple so people can understand it. And I, I think that, you know, saying pressure mediation is extremely simple, but that still seems to confound people. Um, Mother Nature is actually far, far, far more simple than we ever give her credit for. You know, she's not a, a PhD chick with a calculator. No, she's not. She's like one of those uh, muddy bare feet, uh, hemp skirt, and hairy armpit chicks. Yeah, she doesn't have a calculator at all. The only thing she actually understands is pressure mediation. That's correct. So let's understand things from the premise of Mother Nature and how simple she is. Uh, what would be the pressure mediation if, it uh, doesn't matter how strong you are, if you were holding 20 pounds of weight you know, over the top of your head? Would it be simpler to keep applying force, expending calories? Yeah, you're burning food to keep that 20 pound weight over the top of your head, or even, you know, at the end of your arm. You know, it would obviously be a lot simpler to drop it, wouldn't it? That would be the lowest pressure mediation. That would actually be the dissipation of force. The dissipate, because, you know, like weightlifters, they, you know, they eat like uh, 30 eggs and 10 chickens for breakfast, and they go out to the gym and they pump you know, a bunch of uh, weights all day long, you know, they, they burn those calories off. You know, they can't eat like that if they're not weightlifting. So what's pressure mediation? I mean, I, I think I can't explain pressure mediation any simpler than, you know, the expenditure of force and energy. Magnets don't actually have poles. Sure they do. They have a North Pole and a South Pole. No, they have a three-dimensional S-curve. When you actually bring two quote-unquote like polarities together, south and south, or north and north, it's like blowing up, you ever, you know, been one of those inflatables that are shaped like a donut that you go rafting down the river in? When you actually bring two like polarities together, you're actually increasing the force. You're obviously, if you've done it with your hands, you know, and you're sitting there grunting and, you know, straining uh, various uh, bodily sphincters to bring those two like poles together, yeah, that's, that's, that's correct. You're actually expending energy. It's like inflating a torus. You're actually putting more pressure and actually feeding the toroidal geometry of that so-called magnetic repulsion. That actually is true magnetism. However, of course, Mother Nature, of, if you actually were to hold those two like polarities together with your hands and you were to loosen one hand you will notice that the magnet will, one of the magnets in your loose hand, will immediately flip itself and try to accelerate dissimilar polarities. But they're not dissimilar polarities. What you're actually doing is feeding the superimposition of two hyperboloids. A hyperboloid is an hourglass shape, you know? Force in motion and centrifugal divergence, the geometry, and there's, this is the conjugate geometry of the universe. Force in motion, inertia and acceleration. Centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. I actually had one of these in my house. I picked up at a flea market. Let me go here and grab it. Yeah, this is the geometry of uh, so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism at all. It's the geometry of the hyperboloid. The hourglass shape, yes? The superimposition of hyperboloids. Now this is, of course, force dissipation. Opposites don't attract. Let's actually get to the secret of mother nature. Opposites don't attract. That's not an opposite. That is force dissipation, superimposition of those 
two hyperboloidal geometries. And you can actually see this underneath the supercell. You can actually see that the magnets are not accelerating towards one another. Sure they are. Well, superficially they are. Oh, well, these are magnets. They're accelerating towards one another. They're actually not. They're accelerating towards a null modal point between the two. They're not accelerating towards one another. And that seems like a distinction without a difference, but the devil is in the details. And that is a huge, huge, huge devil. That detail is huge. They're not accelerating towards one another. They're accelerating towards the lowest pressure no, modal point, nodal point, excuse me, I was gonna say modality, but I meant to say nodal point. The lowest nodal point, which would be right there. Yeah? Interestingly enough, you can actually draw a thousand metaphysical paradigms talking about the hourglass, the actual sands through the hourglass. You actually notice on the top, however, I've kind of shifted it, there'll be a sinkhole form, you know, opposite ends of the spheres. We actually have volume and mass, and that's where time exists. And right here in the center, there's no such thing as time. If we were to imagine this to be a, uh, a, uh, a point in counter space, which of course is not a point, we say point for sake of convention, but right here, there's no time. Here, there's plenty of time. Here, there's plenty of time. It's because here, there is volume. Volume is due to mass. It is due to force application. The only reason that mass and magnitude exist in 100% of the universe is mass, i.e. matter, uh, the atoms is due to, uh, this is the interatomic volume measured in picometers of every atom, because every atom is nothing other than an electrostatic dynamo. And the air inside the balloon of every atom is due to magnetism, magnetism only! That means 100% of the volume of the universe is due to... Bill said, why are you so interested in magnetism? Well, because there's no difference between physics and metaphysics, and to understand magnetism is to understand the mass and magnitude of the entire universe! Mother Nature is really simple. Like I said, she's a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet and a hemp skirt. She's not a PhD chick with a calculator. She's not. Opposites do not attract. Yeah? Now, this is me. I'm trying to draw a really simple analogy. It'd be like, you know, here. <clears throat> hold this 20-pound uh, weight from your arms over top of your head. You'd be sitting there burning calories, right? Keeping it elevated, right? Opposites don't attract. From the premise of Mother Nature, Mother Nature, if you said that if you're Mother Nature were a real person, say, Mother Nature, opposites attract or do they not? And Mother Nature would be like, what the hell are you talking about? The only thing I know is pressure mediation, force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. And everything that Mother Nature was to do is the dissipation of force, to keep force in play, i.e. blowing up the toroidal geometry of that donut. Everybody think, I think everybody knows what the, the shape of a torus is, i.e. a donut. You know what the shape of a donut is? Of course you do. Mother Nature would say, I don't know any such thing. The only thing I know is that I try to dissipate force as expediently as possible. They're not opposites. They are likes. Because the superimposition of those hyperboloidal geometries are so-called, Hey, bring a North Pole and a South Pole together. They will accelerate. That's number one, not magnetic attraction because there's no such thing as magnetic attraction that's actually dielectric acceleration it is centripetal convergence inertia and acceleration to the null point in counter space just like the dead center of that hourglass behind me that's the only thing that mother nature knows is force dissipation yeah that's the only thing she knows yes a, ra a magnet really does not have two poles sure it does everybody knows this what the hell are you talking about boy Everybody since the ancient uh, Chinese and the Greeks and the Babylonians have known about lodestones and polarities, a North Pole over here and a South Pole over here. No, it is point source field incommensurability that actually defines what the hell a magnet is. But they're not opposites attracting towards one another. No, they're not. It is Mother Nature. Mother Nature doesn't know about opposites. She knows about increasing force, and decreasing, and Mother Nature always works towards the removal of force through centripetal cut. This is the reason why there are no straight lines in the universe. Every line in the universe is curved linear. There's a great word everybody should learn. You probably didn't learn it in high school. Curve linear. Yeah, there are not one single straight line in the universe. You know, you could draw a straight line on a, on a piece of paper. Yeah, but that's artificial. Mother Nature has a no straight lines. Not a single one. Everything is curved linear. It's just like a dog tied uh, tied to a uh, you know a stake in the ground. You know, if it runs around, it'll run around in a curved linear fashion because it's tied 
to the stake. And that stake, of course, is analogous to counter space. Everything is force in motion, inertia and acceleration. Mother Nature has no idea what the hell uh, opposites are. She only knows force and the dissipation of force. The two conjugate geometries of the universe is force of motion, inertia, and acceleration, specifically the geometry of the torus and the hyperboloid. By the way, <clears throat> let me grab this once again. The negative image of this, yeah, if you actually, you're gonna have to squeeze your brain a little bit. The negative image of a hyperboloid, i.e. the hourglass shape, just think of the negative image, yeah? Just think about it. It might take you a little bit of exercising your brain. The negative image, of, it's not my opinion, it's a fact. The negative image of the hyperboloid is the torus. And the negative image of the torus, the inverse image, the negative image, is this, the hyperboloid. Those are the two geometries of force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. By the way, a black hole is exactly like the center of that hourglass, yeah? And this is what people, this is why human beings don't understand black holes. And black holes are not black and they're not actually holes. We're all living up here in the sands of phenomena. Yay, you know, spinning around the galaxy and our silly little earth. And right here is the black hole. People, I don't understand that. It's, yeah, it's outside. It's, it's like a fish being out of water. Fish don't understand that. It can't breathe. It doesn't get it. It's a completely foreign premise. This little null point right here in the hourglass is a completely foreign premise to empirical creatures of phenomena. We are creatures of this sphere or that sphere. We don't understand this part, yeah? Mother Nature does. And I do. I said, Mother Nature is really simple. <sighs> but you weren't taught any of this stuff. You, it's completely foreign to you. But once again, Mother Nature doesn't know anything about opposites. She only understands force and force dissipation. Yeah. And uh, two inverse polarity, right, you North Pole and a South Pole, do not accelerate towards one another. They accelerate towards a null pressure point of counter space. The dissipation of force is like you holding 20 pounds of weights. It's like, what is the lowest pressure mediation, dear sir, of those 20 pounds of, well, you know, I'd be a lot happier if I would drop this weight on the ground and just like go, whew. I was like, well, do it. Okay, you drop the weight. You're not burning any more calories, are you? That's right, that's, that's, that's Mother Nature. She's a hairy armpit chick with muddy feet and a hemp skirt and uh, a tie-dyed tank top, I think. <laughs> anyway, you have to get your mind into understanding how simple things are. They're simple, but they're not simplex. If you don't understand what that means, look up the word simple versus simplex. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hope you like these videos. If you do, click the link below. Right now I'm being eaten by mosquitoes. And the reason why mosquitoes are eating me, since they're mother nature's little creatures, is that they want my blood. And then they use that blood to uh, fly some more because they got more energy, more calories. And they use that to, to uh, reproduce themselves and fly around and bite more things and suck more blood. And they use that blood to burn to generate energy for flying around and making baby mosquitoes. Yes. Nature is more simple than you realize. Yes, indeedy. There's a little frog up here looking at me. You can't see him, but he's looking at me like, what the hell are you doing? <sighs> Thanks so much for watching.